Welcome to this e-lecture on supplier selection part 2, selection and scoring methods. My name is Finn Winstra, professor in purchasing and supplier management at Rotterdam School of Management and holder of the chair endowed by the Dutch Association for Purchasing Management, Navy. This e-lecture was originally developed for the course Purchasing and Supply Management, a core course in the Supply Chain Management Master's program at RSM. During the presentation I will refer to a number of sources. You'll find the full references of these sources at the end of the presentation. In part one of this e-lecture on supplier selection, I've introduced the distinction between the qualification stage and the selection stage. De Boer and colleagues indicate that in the first two steps, qualitative decision-making tools are most appropriate, while in the phases of qualification and final selection, quantitative tools can be used. In this second part of the e-lecture, we will take a closer look at these decision-making tools and in particular review alternative scoring methods. As discussed in the previous slide, in the problem definition phase and the formulation of criteria, usually qualitative methods are used. Therefore, we focus the discussion on quantitative decision methods on the qualification and final choice phases. For qualification, or sometimes called pre-qualification, De Boer and colleagues distinguish four main groups of methods for sorting suppliers. Categorical methods, data development analysis, cluster analysis, and artificial intelligence, or case-based reasoning. Categorical methods are basically qualitative models. Suppliers are evaluated on vari various criteria on ordinal scales, for instance, positive, neutral, and negative. In the end, suppliers are given an overall rating using the same categories. In the qualification process, categorical methods are the most popular methods in practice. Data development analysis techniques Calculate for each supplier the ratio between outputs, for instance quality, versus input, for instance price, but also indirect costs. DEA is helpful to distinguish efficient versus inefficient suppliers. Cluster analysis is similar to data development analysis in that it groups suppliers, but it does so on actual similarities between different suppliers. For instance, the results could show three clusters, one of high quality suppliers, another of low cost suppliers, and a third of highly innovative suppliers. Finally, AI methods, which are quite new, use information and experience from similar previous decision situations, and the algorithms are adapted over time. It is important you understand the main differences between the first three types printed in bold here, but note that in practice the simple categorical methods are still the most popular. Now please note that so far we've been discussing only methods for qualification of suppliers, not final choice. In this slide, we follow De Boer et al. once again to discuss the main alternative decision models for the final choice phase. Five main varieties can be distinguished. Linear weighting, TCO models, mathematical models or programming, statistical models and artificial intelligence based models. Linear weighting techniques are the most popular. In these techniques, weights are given to the criteria and the biggest weight indicates the highest importance. Of these, the compensatory and non-compensatory methods are the most popular. We will come back to these starting from slide 6. Various adaptations have been proposed to the basic linear weighting models. In our experience, these more sophisticated versions, including AHP, ANP and fuzzy set theory, are less common in practice. For more details, we refer to the review by De Boer et al. A second popular method is the total cost of ownership model. 
In this model, all indirect costs associated with the purchase, both before, during and after the transaction, are calculated and added to the acquisition price to arrive at the total cost. For instance, when buying desktop computers, a buying firm may calculate the installation, warranty, software and maintenance cost to calculate the total cost for the computer, for instance per year. TCO models are particularly helpful when buying capital goods that incur usage and or servicing costs. TCO models are helpful to analyze the financial consequences of different purchasing alternatives, but gathering the necessary monetary information is usually more time consuming than for linear weighting models that rely on qualitative or at least non-monetary scores for the different criteria. Then there are three groups of models that are also not so common in practice, at least not yet. Mathematical programming can assist a buying firm to formulate a decision problem in terms of a mathematical objective function that needs to be maximized, for instance quality, or minimized, for instance cost. Statistical methods such as AHP and ANP models deal with stochastic uncertainty related to vendor choice. And, as in the qualification stage, AI models can also be used in the final choice phase. In essence, AI systems such as neural networks and expert systems are trained by experts and or, and or historical data. Again, we refer to de Boer et al. for further details. Another paper by de Boer and colleagues from 2006 proposes a five-step approach to the final supplier selection phase. 1. Choose criteria. 2. Relate the criteria to each other, in other words, how important are the criteria in relation to each other. And 3. Set criteria weights. 4. Choose the scoring methods. And finally, 5. Determine the winner. In this presentation, I focus on steps two and four, not only because the Boer et al. argue that they are typically neglected in practice, but also because I discuss the inputs for deciding on criteria and their weights extensively in part one of this e-lecture on supplier selection. In slide four, I have argued following the Boer et al. 2001, that in the final choice or selection phase, different quantitative methods can be used, but that linear weighting models are the most popular. In these models or techniques, weights are given to the criteria with the biggest weight indicating the highest importance. Ratings on the criteria are multiplied by their weights and summed in order to obtain a single figure for each supplier. This technique is also referred to as the weighted factor score method. Within linear weighting models, several techniques can be distinguished as discussed in slide four, but two simple varieties are mostly applied in practice, compensatory and non-compensatory methods. Therefore, for the remainder of this e-lecture, I will not go into techniques such as AHP, ANP and fuzzy sets theory. In compensatory techniques, there is no minimum score on each of the criteria. Thus, for instance, inferior quality can be compensated by a superior price. Non-compensatory techniques use knockout criteria. For instance, suppliers need to have a minimum level of quality assurance in place. Normally, such knockout criteria would be applied in the qualification stage, preceding the final selection. However, especially if there's no qualification stage taking place, knockout criteria and non-compensatory weighted factor score methods may be applied in the final choice phase. In principle, one could also distinguish a third type of techniques within linear weighting models, and that is semi-compensatory or outranking methods. This is essentially a final selection process of two or more sub-steps but in the first step, for instance, the suppliers with below average price are selected, and then in the second step, the suppliers are ranked in terms of their best score on quality or on a combined set of factors. In such a process, there is not a knockout criterion of a preset value, as in the non-compensatory methods. And not all factor scores can be traded off with each other because of the stepwise scoring and exclusion of legible suppliers. 
That is the difference with compensatory methods. The compensatory method, for instance, with 40% weight given to price scores, 30% to quality scores, and 30% to delivery scores, has also some ratio-based alternatives that are essentially compensatory. One is the quality to price ratio, and the other is price to quality. In this context, quality refers to the positive values of a procurement alternative in the broad sense, including product quality, but also, for instance, service terms, social sustainability aspects, etc. Bergman and Lundberg, 2013, discussed these quality to price and price to quality methods in more detail in the context of public procurement. Finally, one can multiply scores on quality and price, using a score where obviously high prices translate in low scores. In the subsequent slides that go into scoring methods, we will elaborate on situations where a compensatory weighted factor score method is used in the final choice phase. Once a decision has been taken on a compensatory or non-compensatory weighted factor score method, as in step 2, and the criteria have been assigned weights, as in step 3, the scoring methods for each criterion need to be defined. We want to emphasize two critical choices here. One is the choice of scales. This seems a rather trivial issue, but can have major consequences. Imagine a situation where criterion A is weighted for 10% and criterion B for 20%. If then a different scoring scale is used, for instance 1 to 10 for A and 1 to 5 for B, the weighted maximum ratings for A and B would be the same. This would not be in line with the decision to allocate different weights to the two criteria. Therefore, either the same scales need to be applied or the scores need to be standardized. In step 4, there is a second critical choice regarding the scoring method, and that is the type of scale. As in my previous example, ordinal scales may be used, typically for criteria for which the scores are hard to quantify such as the degree of strategic fit or the quality of previous customers' references. Another common scoring method is relative scoring. This can be done in three main forms. In the first form, bids are ranked and awarded preset scores, for instance, 10 points to the number 1, 8 points to the number 2, etc. In the other two forms, the score for each offer on a particular criterion is based on its actual deviation from either the actual best bid for that criterion or a predetermined best bid for that criterion. These relative scoring methods are pretty common, but some are sensitive to the risk of rank reversal. Rank reversal occurs when the relative ranking of two options depends on the availability and scores of a third option. This is not what you would like. In the subsequent slides I will use illustrations to discuss the possible flaws of relative scoring methods A and B. De Boer et al. 2006 provide additional illustrations for method C. Here you see an example of a relative scoring method, where predetermined scores are given based on the ranking for each criterion. In table 8 you see a situation where only two suppliers bid, and in table 9 you see the situation where two additional suppliers are bidding. The addition of suppliers 3 and 4 changes the ranking on price in such a way that the difference between supplier 1 and 2 is increased. 
suppliers three and four have prices that are between those of one and two. The scores of one and two on quality are unaffected. Suppliers three and four offer totally insufficient quality. But because of the decreased score of supplier two on price, it is now second in the overall ranking. Whereas before suppliers three and four participated in table eight, supplier two was ranked number one. Such rank reversal is undesirable, also because it encourages suppliers such as number one to call upon friendly colleagues to game such tendering processes by putting in fake bids. Next, I present an illustration derived from Telgen 2018 of what can go wrong with relative scoring using the best actual score on a specific criterion. This is form B of relative scoring methods as mentioned in slide 8. For simplicity we again have two criteria, price and quality, and for each the maximum score is 100 points. The total score is the simple sum of these two scores. Now assume that the score on price is calculated by the simple formula in the blue box in the middle. In the first situation described in the top half of the slide, we have three bidders. C gets the maximum score on price since it offers the lowest price. B gets 50 points and A 40 points. In essence, because the lowest price, 200, is respectively 50 and 60% lower than their respective bids. Bidder A, B and C earn respectively 95, 80 and 20 points on quality and hence A wins with a total of 135 points. Then assume that the buying firm realizes, for instance, based on new information, that C should not have passed the qualification stage. The quality score is indeed very low and perhaps C does not really have the quality certificates it said it had. So supplier C is no longer included. In this new situation, depicted in the bottom part of the slide, bidder B gets the max score on price since it now offers the lowest price. Bidder A gets 80 points because the best price is 20% lower than its own bid. Bidder A and B earn respectively 95 and 80 points on quality, as before, and hence B wins with a total of 180 points. Again, as in the previous slide, we have rank reversal. A is no longer the winner, not because an additional supplier has entered the tendering process, but because a supplier left or was forced to leave. So, in summary, the main conclusions for this e-lecture on supplier selection, part 2, supplier and scoring methods, are as follows. First, final selection of suppliers can be structured into five steps, where two steps deserve particular attention because they are typically neglected in practice. Step 2, relating the criteria to each other, meaning primarily choosing a compensatory or non-compensatory method. And step 4, the choice of the actual scoring methods. We have discussed the risks of not using the same types of scales for different criteria and the possible downsides of relative scoring methods. These methods, which are very common in public procurement, but not only there, may be subject to rank reversal. This slide contains the references used in this e-lecture on supplier selection and scoring methods.